Let me take a few minutes to introduce myself. My name is Karen Matika, and I'm the Director of Quality Engineering at QuickBase. I've been at QuickBase for seven years. Currently, I manage a system quality team and established and facilitate our quality community of practice. As you'll find out, our product is being used extensively by our customers for managing the COVID-19 related needs of their business during this pandemic. I'll take you all through all aspects of our quality journey and the foundation we've established, the practices we've put in place, and the culture we've developed. I hope to demonstrate how powerful quality can be in increasing our engineering efficiency, collaboration, and confidence so that we can successfully serve our customers in a truly critical time of need. Now, what is QuickBase? QuickBase is an application development platform that enables problem solvers of any technical background to quickly turn ideas and processes into better ways of working that make them more efficient, informed, and productive. What's special about QuickBase is that it empowers business users and problem solvers in any department who may or may not have a technical background to create custom applications that match the work that they do quickly and affordably. It maximizes the effectiveness of teams by connecting data systems and people. QuickBase is often described as the mortar and glue between these three things. We have 6,000 plus customers across a wide range of industries. They range from small businesses through Fortune 500 enterprise scale organizations. To name a few, we have Southwest Airlines. They have over 700 business applications on QuickBase, Google, Columbia Sports, the District of Columbia, and the state of Georgia. We've had customers creating COVID-19 related applications in QuickBase since mid-March. To date, we have 284 customers that have applications they've built, and they've created a total of 662 different applications. We also have something called Project Grace, where we offer free access to QuickBase for COVID-19 response solutions. Organizations on the front lines that include healthcare providers, state and local governments, educators, and nonprofits can create quick base applications that are tailored to their specific solutions. And our employees are the ones that are helping to create these solutions. We also offer a wide variety of templates that allow people to quickly build their own solutions to support their needs. A great example of a customer and how they're using QuickBase during this crisis. As with many other cities and states, New Orleans experienced a massive spike in residents seeking resources. So I'll leave you to read the quote above, but I think Tyrell Morris, who is the director of the New Orleans Parish Communication District, really captured how their parish was able to quickly use QuickBase to connect citizens with the emergency resources they needed. And they've developed a number of applications. So they have a self-quarantine registry. So citizens under self-quarantine can register using QuickBase. And every day, a member of Tyrell's teams calls these folks to check in on them. They also have an integration with another system to produce heat maps for the mayor. And then they have a critical needs application. So people that need medication, food, and supplies, and housing can register for unmet needs requests. There are also several other examples of QuickBase and how they've been used by our customers. One of the largest U.S. cities created a medical response hotline process. We have a medical center tracking trained employees so they can allocate medical care to rural communities. And we have an enterprise delivery service provider who's tracking COVID-19 cases and assessing business impact in real time. So what's our quality story? So imagine that we have a foundation of a chimney. While this is not an exhaustive list, each brick shown represents some important aspect in our own quick base quality journey. I'm not going to talk about any of these in great depth. It's not that wouldn't be useful, but it's not what this story is about. Now, you might look at each of these and say there's nothing surprising I'm seeing here, and that's true. There isn't anything here that we haven't heard about before. This is because individually, these aren't as impactful. This presentation is intended to show how these individual components come together to build something far more powerful and compelling. The hope is that our story will provide you inspiration and insights to help you move further along in your own quality journeys. This is so you can ensure you really are there to respond to your customers when they need you most. So how does our story start? Well, it probably sounds very familiar to what most of you have encountered in the past. The core of our product is 20 years old. It didn't have any automated testing for many years. And when we did, it was a slow and painful process. We had other challenges. 
frameworks and tools that didn't work well, long running and fragile test suites, a lack of trust and confidence in our test and test results. If a crisis happened during this window of time, would we have easily been able to make changes to support critical customer needs? The answer is a clear no. Would we have been able to do that quickly and with confidence? The answer is a clear no as well. It's not like we weren't evolving and making progress in the years past, but when I reflect back, there are junctures in time that lead to far greater transformation. Early in 2017 is one of those times. We had solicited input from the broader organization on how we were doing as a product team. The input was sobering. We were not delivering product capabilities that were viewed as valuable to our customers, and we didn't deliver with the frequency and predictability they wanted and expected. As a result, the product organization established three attributes that drove all our efforts over the course of the year. Speed, business responsiveness, and predictability. I found that as a quality organization, these attributes were ones we could really connect with and were much more tangible to us. We wanted to be able to think about what do we need to do and change in order to support frequent and timely releases to ensure that we had faster testing cycles and at the same time maintained high levels of quality. It turned out to be just what we needed in order to start our transformational journey. Our mission became testing at the speed of business. As a result of this, we embarked on the first phase of our journey, and we established a cross-functional team that was really focused on looking at first where we were at. So what were we testing, where were we testing, how were we testing, and when were we testing? We then answered those questions again with a forward-thinking focus. What do we need and want to be doing? During those discussions, it was essential for us to put aside any obstacles and constraints that would inhibit our thinking, creativity, and innovation. This had to be a free and open visioning exercise. And we had a discussion that was wide ranging and in depth, and we spent many long hours putting material together. One of the outputs of this was the QA architecture diagram shown here, and that really encapsulated all that we had discussed. Of all the content we put together, this was the one thing everyone in the organization could connect with and relate to, and it really became the basis for most of our discussions, and I think it was the thing that helped craft the path we started to go down. So while we were tackling some of the basics that were part of the phase one strategy, the next month we encountered a few other things that upset the apple cart. One was we had a re-architecture initiative we abandoned, and the second one was that we reevaluated our engineering organization. What was important to us? What type of culture did we want to have? And included in that was a shift in our dev to QA ratios in order to foster greater accountability. I'm communicating these events because they had a material impact on how we move forward. It's also to showcase that we faced regular changes and challenges so the reality is that not all paths are smooth and seamless. You have to work through challenges and continue to adapt and learn. But as a result of this, we evolved some of our thinking and we really had to zero in on three core investment areas. One was shifting our automation distribution to the lower levels of our technology stack. The second one was focusing on stability and standardization. So our infrastructure tooling and our processes and the third one was the ability for us to test in isolation. So how can we use mocks and containerization to reduce our dependencies? Now, I want to make it clear that progress like this can't happen in isolation. Quality itself can't happen in isolation. And I believe the evolution and maturity of our quality practices was directly tied to the maturity we have in other parts of the organization. So we can't and wouldn't have been able to achieve some of these objectives unless other functions are in position to support us. And CICD is a great example. The operations team was maturing at the same pace as our quality organization. And so we were able to partner together to implement some of the things that we needed for our future success. In the latter part of 2018 and early 2019, we had some other changes that were really beneficial to how we move forward. And this is the phase that we're actually still in today. And it was really about focusing on streamlining, extending, and adding depth to what we had in place. 
One of the first things that we did was develop and create the system quality team and our quality community of practice. And I truly think that this is one of the best things that we've done in the product organization. It's been really instrumental in accelerating our progress. So the system quality team is really focused on establishing and driving key quality initiatives focused at a product and system integration level. And then it's also enablement through testing and quality support and services. So that's frameworks, infrastructure, practices, and tools. And then we also look to up-level the quality expertise in our organization through training and education and partnering with the broader quality community of practice. And then we did some other things as well. We actually had two independent quality strategies, one for our legacy technology stack and one for the new Java services that we were putting in place, and we were able to coalesce those into one. So it wasn't a one legacy code base or the new UI code. It was about one product that we needed to ensure was of high quality. Then we were also able to dig down and really get down to another level of depth in various strategies. So from a UI, API, and performance perspective. And then the next things that we focused on were really tighter coupling and line of sight between our product technology and quality strategies. So quality had a more prominent seat at the table. And then we did other things like extend our capabilities and offerings to further enable teams. This included benchmarking and performance, visual regression, dashboarding, so areas that we really hadn't been able to spend too much time in. Lastly, we took a fresh look at our automation priorities based on more of a holistic product-based approach. So we had product experts look at what we should be testing and automating versus what we were actually automating. This really summarizes our journey so far. It's really about key junctures that drove significant change for us, but it's also about continued learning and growth. I won't try and predict what's next for us. If the past is any indicator, we've always known when we've reached the next step in our journey. I'm confident that when the time comes, the next phase will reveal itself in the same way. What's next will be based on learned experiences, the new needs of the organization, and the overall maturity of our development life cycle and quality practices. All I know is that when we get there, it's going to be exciting, motivating, and highly rewarding. Now, there's one essential component to the success that I haven't discussed yet, and this is the importance of having a culture of quality. To me, it's really the glue that holds everything together that we've talked about, and it's the one thing that can propel your growth forward in ways that you can't anticipate. So what am I really talking about here? Well, there's, testing isn't a single point in time activity. There's also no single tool, test, or person that can guarantee quality. For quality to be part of the culture, everyone needs to support and contribute to that. So how do you get a group of people that are passionate about quality, who are talking about quality on a regular basis, who are taking quality-focused actions? Well, here are a few of the things that I believe are important. One is that it's a mindset and there's an emotional component to it, and this may or may not be able to be changed. In fact, you may need to change the type of people in your organization in order to advance your culture. And I think equally important is having advocates in other roles in the organization that are able to influence and further change. So we have engineers who are strong quality advocates who are able to work with other engineers in the organization to ensure that they're adopting the appropriate quality practices. And then it's easy to say that you want everyone to own quality, but it has to be coupled with empowerment and accountability. People need to see the value of their quality contributions or understand the implications of not being quality minded. And then while we have broad support across teams, I think it's very important to develop and maintain a leadership emphasis on quality. It does give quality a seat at the table, but it also messages the importance of quality in an entirely different light to the organization. And then lastly, trust and confidence. You have to build that through a foundation of frameworks, practices, infrastructure, and tools. And they also have to provide consistent benefit and value. I'm going to let Nick Vancelo, one of our developers, speak to the trust that I'm referring to. Working with the system quality team has helped us out a lot, ensuring that the code that we uh, push up into master or deploy to our customers is ready to go. Uh, QuickBase is a very complex product with a lot of different edge cases, so trying to do that all manually or remembering all the different pieces we need to check is very difficult. So having those automated tests give us confidence that we're releasing the right stuff to our customers and not breaking anything. 
So as Nick said, we want to ensure we release quality code to our customers. Customers have a short attention span these days. If they aren't happy, they can easily find another product to use. And likewise, when they do get new product capabilities, they have a limited tolerance for quality-related issues. And I'm a strong believer that embracing a culture of quality can be a differentiator and a competitive advantage for an organization in the long run. So what can you take away from all of this? I think this slide really captures how organizations view a quality progression or journey. If the expectation is that it's going to be a smooth progression to high quality, then that isn't realistic. You are most likely missing essential steps in the process, and the problems may not reveal themselves until something unexpected and urgent happens. Having ups and downs is more realistic, but the evolution is definitely a lot messier than that. The reality is that you may have fits and starts with your quality journey. You might zigzag and circle around for a period of time, feel like you're not moving forward at all, or even experience taking steps back. Yes, these can all happen, and I think this is actually great. Success is not a function of the number of setbacks we face. It's how much we learn and grow from each of them. We will be better tomorrow than we are today, and I firmly believe that. You just need to stay the course and be flexible, adaptable, and resourceful. You will reach a day further down the road and realize that you've been on a fabulous journey the entire time. So what's this story all about? It's about a quality journey. There are many small steps you take on a day-to-day -day basis in service to furthering these efforts. While we are an essential product in many businesses, that really hits home how important we are when a crisis like we're currently in surfaces. Our customers can't do what they need to do without having a product that is stable, reliable, secure, and of high quality. This is a story about our customers and about ensuring there is quality when they need it most. With that, I'm going to close with a snippet from Jay Jamerson, our Chief Product and Technology Officer. Quality is mission critical at QuickBase. Uh, I like to think of the, of the old quote, an army marches on its stomach, which basically means all the great innovation and all the great things that we're doing with our platform to help customers get new innovation and new goodies in our product all depend on the quality and the robustness of the platform that we deliver each and every day. So if customers can't trust that our service is going to be up and performant and scalable to meet whatever requirements they have of us, then everything else we're doing is not going to be successful. So in that regard, I look at the quality uh, that your team and in the work that we do with Sauce Labs as mission critical to what we're doing at QuickBase each and every day, because nothing else matters if we don't get quality right. I'm so glad I got to share the QuickBase quality journey today. We are passionate about quality, as Jay reinforces, and I hope some of this resonates with you. So thanks for your time today, and I'm happy to take some questions now.